righty, are we working here? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Alrighty, are we working here? Alright, can everyone actually like hear me, see me, all that good streaming stuff? Yes, no? Alrighty, hopefully this is working. Hey, alright. Alright, wonderful. You guys can actually see and hear me. This is great. Um, so hey everybody, I am Taylor. I am the Stargate guy. Um, if you haven't seen this channel before, basically I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Uh, Stargate theories, uh, how things work, character profiles, racial profiles, all kinds of different things. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, so today is a um, uh, something that you guys have wanted. You wanted a, a, a live stream so that we can interact more. Uh, in order to do that, I am pairing that with the theory of, uh, of this video. Um, so we did have a subscriber uh, comment and uh, leave us a topic for discussion for this live stream. And we will get to that right after this. Alrighty. Holy cow, I think that actually worked. <laughs> Alright, so, um, subscriber Eric Durante, I hope I'm saying that right, Eric. Topic for discussion, near the end of SG-1, it became possible to dial multiple gates at the same time from a single gate. He's talking about uh, Stargate SG-1 Season 8, I believe, The Reckoning Part 1 and 2. Um, the question... What would happen if you stepped through the gate? Would a copy of would a copy of you step out of the gate like the blast of the Dakar super weapon or would your matter be dispersed across the gates or something else I haven't thought of? So uh, I, I'm going to give you my two cents about this question and about this little theory uh, and then let me know what you guys think about this and at the very end if you have additional questions about this theory or about something else uh, then we can talk about that, but let's let's talk about this main scenario. So with uh, Season 8 episode, I think it's episode 16 and 17, The Reckoning Part 1 and 2, uh, they are on the planet Dakara, and the they find out that the uh, mountain of Dakara is basically a giant device created by the ancients that was originally used to help seed life in the galaxy. Uh, now, in this this um device see this is the thing with live stream you don't get to see all the screw ups i make while i'm while i'm filming these um so this device would has the range to create something in a in a solar system but how can you move a planet around an entire galaxy to seed life in a galaxy you you really can't so uh the guaud found a way to dial all the gates in the in the galaxy simultaneously and have the energy of the Dakara super weapon go through the gate in order to wipe out the replicators. They they modified it so that it could do that. Uh, but it was originally designed to create more life in the galaxy. With me so far? Okay, so um, the question is, since you can dial all these gates simultaneously now, what would happen if you were to actually step through that thing? Would you have copies of yourself popping out all over the galaxy? you know, have a cheap way of cloning, or how would that work? Uh, well, Eric, with Stargates, we do know that you, know, you can have a matter stream. It has to go through all at once. You step through the gate, you are put into a, a buffer. Basically, you're transported through a wormhole to another gate. You are stored in a buffer. And then when the, the complete body or the, the complete organic or non-organic thing goes through the gate and into that buffer, then it comes out of the other gate. It receives that information and comes out all in one chunk. Um, as we found out in Stargate Atlantis, with the puddle jumper getting stuck in the gate, is that you did not, you could not have the front half of the puddle jumper 
materialize after the gate shuts down and it cuts off the rest of the puddle jumper. It has to come through in one chunk or it doesn't come through at all. It gets wiped from the buffer, so to speak. So, uh, we also know about Stargates it is that the ancients, they loved, uh, they absolutely hated writing instruction manuals. We, we know that from Stargate Atlantis. But they absolutely love safety. So much to the extent that they forbid a guy from messing around with time travel because it actually worked. And apparently um, they forbid him from working on the thing in the first place. But I guess the High Council of Atlantis thought, look, his experiments would never get off the ground anyway. So let's tell him to stop and not really force his hand until it actually works. And surprise, surprise, it worked. And Weir comes back into the past. Um, that's one example. Another example is, uh, for example, the personal shield device that McKay finds at Atlantis in episode two, I think, or episode three. I think it's episode two. Um, is that, yes, that is activated by the ancient gene. Yes, that can protect you from all kinds of different things, from bullets, from punches, from falling off of a, of a cliff, from all of that stuff. You still need air. Air still passes through it. But the safety device is that it won't actually kill you. Um, like McKay, he turned it on inadvertently, but if he really wanted to, um, he could take off that protection so he could actually eat and drink. The shield was designed to protect you, not to kill you. So with these things in mind, I theorize that the gates, even though it can dial all the gates in the galaxy simultaneously, and it can submit across energy field, it can submit across radio signals, it can transmit that kind of data, it cannot pass through organic or inorganic matter. So if a, if a person were to step through that gate at the same time, um, you know, or right after the Dakar superweapon, I theorize that the gate would not let them step through, that there's a built-in safety feature uh, that they would reject that matter coming through. Um, how it would reject that matter, um, that's a little up in the air. Um, I, I believe it wouldn't, it would either take you to a single gate and store that in the buffer and transport you to a single random gate across the galaxy, or as soon as it realized that matter that was not a radio signal, that was not, you know, energy based, tried to step through the event horizon, that the event horizon would not let you enter. If you notice, you know, it's a little bit of a process to step through an event horizon and it kind of looks watery. Um, I theorize, I don't really have too much of a basis for this one, you know, either it'll store you and it'll throw you out to a random gate, that's very likely, or the her event horizon itself will not let you step through. Uh, but I theorize that there had to be some kind of safety feature built into the Stargates to prevent somebody from doing that. Um, you know, otherwise it would just be a, a giant uh, killing machine if you wanted to dial everyone simultaneously. Um, I don't, you know, the ancients, although they make simultaneous killing machines, the Stargate was more of a means of transportation not to kill people. So they put in a lot of the safety features. We saw this with the episode Red Sky, where, um, I, I wanna say Amanda Tapping, but where Samantha Carter bypasses a lot of the safety protocols in order to dial a planet and to go through a freaking sun in order to get to this planet and to get a lock. And the Asgard even said, look, you're a freaking moron. These Stargates have safety features for a reason. So I theorize that there must be some kind of safety feature in effect to prevent a person or a thing from stepping through that gate if it wasn't a radio signal, energy based, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what I think about this theory. What do you guys think? Uh, let's, let's check out the chat real quick here. Uh, cause I've been talking for a little while. Um, let's see here. David Acklin. Um, I think you'd get a return to sender. Yeah. Um, basically you try to step through and it, it shoots you right back or, or prevents you from going. Uh, Darth Raven. Uh, the Stargate guy, do you think the super weapon was a backup program in case life re or in case life rebels against the ancients? And do you think there are more groups than the ancients and the Ori? Um, that's a little bit of a two-parter there. 
So with the with the Dakar super weapon, um, you know, it, it wasn't designed to be a weapon. You know, we uh, one of the things that we hear about from Anubis in his ascended state is that it was originally designed to seed life in the galaxy. And I, out of all the things that Anubis says, I kind of believe that one um, because I don't really see. You know, we know that the ancients had to deal with a plague. And so they needed a way to eradicate the plague and to see life again. And that's where, where the super weapon of Dakara comes out. Um, so in that way, it is kind of a backup program um, for, the, for the plague and for spreading life. I think that's what you're talking about here. Um, and do I think there's more groups than the ancients and the Ori? Maybe. Um, so we know that, that the ancients left from the Ori and the Ark of Truth. Uh, the science-based group left their home galaxy, went galaxies away uh, to um, do, 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 to the Milky Way galaxy, and they seeded life in that galaxy. They went to Pegasus galaxy, they seeded life in that galaxy. So it is theoretically possible that they went to another galaxy and that they seeded human-like life in that galaxy again, and we don't know. Um, it's, it's theoretically possible. They did have a intergalactic travel but um, I, I don't know. Hopefully we'll get a continuation of the series and we'll find out for sure. Uh, but it is, in my opinion, I think it's possible. Um, Kokai, I think the Stargate was made for exploration purposes and not killing purposes. But every technology can have a use in bad ways and good ways, depending on the person using it. You, you do have a good point. You do have a very good point. Um, you know, they couldn't have made a, a safety feature for everything. You know, um, let's see here. Petrk Herkin, um, P T R K space H R N K, um, at David Acklin. Uh, did we ever see something like that? No, uh, we never really saw a return to sender at all. Well, kind of. I mean, the closest thing that we have is when the wormhole went around and dealt with a solar flare, and you came back to your same gate, but at a different time. Um, so in that way, that's kind of a return to sender. I mean, they didn't gate to another gate back in time. They had to come back. So kind of, but not not exactly in the way that we're talking about now. Uh, Dustin Beard, I think it would store yourself in the buffer of the Stargate. You went through kind of like Tilk uh, did with the, or Tilk dealt with, except with the gate on Dakara. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Dustin. That could be the safety feature there, the return to sender. Uh, is that it stores you in that gate's buffer and then it spits you back out. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, Java beans. Uh, but does the safety feature come in still with the earth cobbled together dialing system um, and with the object of life from being turned into data? Can it make multiple copies? With the object of life being turned into data, can it be multiple copies? So with... Um, with the homemade slap together DHD that Samantha Carter made, uh, that allows us to bypass safety protocols. You know, we see that in the episode Red Sky. Um, as far as that safety feature, if you were to dial out from the Earth gate and uh, simultaneously to all the other gates, and if you were to step through, I don't really know if the safety feature would be in effect there because it's a question of is it built into the DHD or is it built into the Stargate itself? Um, and that's, that's a very, very good question. Since we're dealing with the DHD and simultaneous dialing, theoretically, that safety feature is in the DHD itself. So that might not be on the earth gate. Um, and the second part, uh, oh, chat's moving here. With the object of life forming and turning into data, couldn't it make multiple copies? Well, that's, that's really the question. Uh, Java beans. Um, I theorize that if it's solid matter from any other uh, any other DHD gate combo in the galaxy, um, that it, it wouldn't work. That's part of the safety feature. But with radio transmissions, with things that are maybe maybe it's not maybe you know um, radio waves, energy based things. Because the Dakara um, beam, I, I I keep wanting to call it the Dakara weapon, but the the Dakara field that it emits. That's an energy based. We could see that it was clearly energy based. Um, so theoretically, since 
the gates, I theorize that the gates were designed to, for simultaneous dialing to allow for the Dakara energy to go through, um, then uh, I theorize that, you know, it's only for that kind of radio frequency, that kind of energy to go through not organic matter. I hope this is making sense. Uh, Mauser 1984, it could be how Ball created his perfect clones when you're going to discuss my destiny time travel theory. Um, so, Mauser 1984, I'm still doing research about the destiny time travel theory uh, that you posted me on Facebook. With, uh, with the Ball clones, that's a, that's a good question. Um, let's see here, with the Ball clones, is that how he made multiple copies? So, with the ball, uh, I have to think about this now. So, it was the was the multiple copies before, um, was before the, the episode to the Reckoning, or was that after? Because if it was after, you might have a very good point here. Because ball did have perfect clones, including the, the symbiote as well as the host. Let's see here, story of history one, do 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 do. Because the, the Reckoning was right at the tail end of season eight, uh, right before Richard Dean Anderson left. And let's see here, let's take a look here at the season nine episodes. Season nine dealt with a lot of the Ori, um, a lot of the Lucian Alliance. Shoot, you might have a very good point. Let's see here. Who was that, Mausers? Let's take a look at the season eight episodes. Holy cow. Uh, for the people re reviewing this, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, StargateCommand.co. I don't know how to screen share. Um, at the season eight episodes, Covenant, Sacrifices, Ender's Game, Gemini. You know, that is, that is theoretically possible. That might be a good point. Huh. That might be a very good point. Guys, let me know, let me know what you think. So looking at, just glancing at the episodes, it looks like the Ball clones did come after the Reckoning Part 1 and 2. And Ball's Gua Old guy who created the simultaneous dialing uh, system um, did work for him. Very, very clever Gua Old. So it, it might be, I, I might be completely wrong about the safety feature. It might be totally possible that Ball used the gate system in order to clone himself. Dialed up, you know, a dozen, 14 different gates in a network. Uh, I mean, not the entire galaxy. We don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of balls. Um, but, shoot, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, Alex Rosie, I guess, Earth's Gate overrid uh, Atlantis is one. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Ball could cut off his hand and put it into the sarcophagus and grow them like that. There's a possibility. I mean, we don't know really the full extent of the healing of the sarcophagus. I did a, a theory video about that on uh, the Beard vs. Geek channel. How does the sarcophagus work? I'm going to plan on doing another one for this channel and look more into that. Um, but since it's it's restoring, I theorize that it's the restoring of cells, making cells multiply, 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 uh, copies of itself, it's theoretically possible. Um, I have to do some more research in that. Uh, Dustin Beard, I think the new series will be announced in San Diego. I guess you've got a new Icarus type base created and supplying. Well, let's let's hold on, Justin. Or hold on, Dustin. Let's talk about that in, in a second. Um, I thought the ball clones were from the Earth based biotech company using tech ball showed up with. Well, yeah. Uh, honestly, I haven't done too much about exactly. Too much research about how a ball exactly copied himself or cloned himself. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look more into that because um, we might have a, a a topic for a, a very good very good video. I need I need to do some research in about how ball exactly did that. If he used his biotech company on Earth, 
um, or if he used the Stargates. Uh, Malgrigan, it would make sense uh, for repopulating life as well because you could chunk a you could you could chuck a chicken in one end and have a chicken pop out of every planet in the galaxy. It would explain how life is so similar. Um, yeah, Malger, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, but another way, like there, there is other elements for life. All the planets have to be in the Goldilocks zone. Um, you know, they all need to have oxygen on it. Therefore, plant life, similar plant life is, is very likely. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a possibility. Uh, we really need a new series. Oh yeah, I agree. We do really need a new series. Um, do, 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 considering that would work, Mauser in 1964, perhaps the Asgard could have saved their race with this. Maybe, you know, maybe the Asgard uh, could have saved themselves by using that cloning technique if, in fact, it would work. I just need to do more research. Um, Stargate Command needs to happen. The pilot could be a rescue mission to save the destiny. No? Okay, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about something that was mentioned in the comments here. Where was it? Oh, uh, Dustin Beard. I think a new series will be announced in San Diego. My guess is a new Icarus type base uh, created to supply and reach Destiny. Uh, they could use all the Stargate series characters if they needed or wanted. Um, I recently got a. A uh, private message by another subscriber. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, Dustin, you're the one that sent me the message. Um, so there was a link that Dustin sent me uh, linking to a, a convention uh, just a little while ago where Christopher Judge, who played Tilk, was talking at this convention. <clears throat> and one of the things that uh, was asked and that he didn't really want to talk about was the option for or the possibility of a new series. Um, he said like right before he got into that convention, he was sent a text message to not not say anything. Um, but Chris is I would love to play that guy in poker because that guy, <laughs> even though he's a good actor, um, he kind of sucks <laughs> at um, not having tells that um are, are very easy to see. That's one way of putting it. Um, so after after this live stream, I'm gonna tack in that link, or Dustin, if you could throw up that link in the comment section or the chat section, that would be awesome. Um, but basically, basically Chris Judge was, was hinting at there is a solid possibility. We do know that he was presenting MGM um, or Stargate Command uh, with the uh, with different possibilities, I know he was pitching uh, like a, a story kind of based upon Tilk and his continuation. Um, yeah, so it's it's a strong possibility. San Diego Comic Con is in like a week, maybe two, I think. Um, so and there's a big Stargate panel that's going to happen. I got notified by Stargate Command that they're going to have a big panel down there. Um, so it's it's a possibility, and I'm really hoping there is going to be another series that comes out this year, next year, um, where, you know, I, I think that MGM is looking at the at the market. They're looking at us as a fan base. They tested the water with Stargate Origins. Stargate Origins had mixed, mixed reviews, mixed feelings. I myself have mixed feelings about it. Um, but I think it is totally possible that Stargate is going to come back. There's just so many people, you know, that are pitching for it that want it. And Chris Judge is one of those. Uh, Joe Flanagan, for a while, was was one of those. He offered to purchase uh, the Stargate license, or he offered to, to purchase the Stargate franchise from MGM. They said no. Uh, they're doing some license deals, but it's it's totally possible. And I'm really hoping that we're going to hear something at San Diego Comic Con. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be there uh, because that takes time and money, and I I don't have either of those. Um, I am hoping to go to GateCon. And September, I'm talking with uh, the GateCon people about maybe a press pass and uh, doing some interviews with the, uh, with the guests that show up. Um, so uh, we'll see, you know, maybe, maybe, 
maybe we'll all get a chance to speak with them at GateCon after whatever announcements they're going to make at San Diego Comic-Con. Let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, Destin is going to put a link to that um, in the comment section. Awesome. Yes, Tilk does have a steel poker face. A real guy, not so much. I totally agree. Um, hey, guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Christian Lang. Hey, dude, what's up? Frequent commenter. Uh, let's see here. Still steel and visor I, I don't know how to say your name dude um he is one of the actors that has a good chance as to being seen in the new series i agree um christopher judge tilk has a very good chance of being seen in a new series jaffa do have a very long lifespan tilk was pretty young when the series ended still um after his entire time um spent uh spent on board the ship while everyone else was getting well he was getting old too uh, but Jaffa has a very life li long lifespan, solid character, people love. So, yeah, there's a very high likelihood of that happening. And Chris himself is still pretty young. So, um, yeah, I think there's a good possibility that we'll see Tilk in a new continuation story. Um, okay, if the new series happens, which series would you want continued? Also, it's Oyak. Oh, Oyak. That's how you say your name. Um... So if a new series were to happen, honestly, I'm, I'm betting that the, the most success that they could possibly have with uh, not rebooting but continuing the franchise would have to be SG-1 based um, out of all of the different series of the, of the, the different spinoffs of the, of the Stargate franchise. SG-1 was the strongest. It had some of the most loyal people, and that's what really caused Stargate Atlantis to succeed. That's what made people wanted to start watching Stargate Universe um, initially, is that Stargate SG-1 franchise. And all of the actors uh, that played main roles in Stargate uh, SG-1 are still around. They're still acting. Um, most likely, you know, Richard Dean Anderson would be, would be fine. Uh, getting some money to come back and revising his role, maybe do a couple of cameos. Um, Chris would probably sign on for, you know, a, a three, five year thing. Um, Chris is awesome in that he is very active in the Stargate fan base community. Um, he's awesome. Not only is he a good actor, he seems like a really awesome guy. I would love to, to play golf with him. Like, he just seems like a really nice guy. Um, but I know he would, he's been hanging around the Stargate franchise, you know, ever since it started doing the conventions. Um, and he's, he seems to love the conventions. So, um, you know, I, I think that their, their best bet is with Stargate SG-1, doing a continuation of that, um, doing it out of the Stargate command, doing it out of the SGC, um, meaning on an Icarus type base or on a, on an alpha base, that kind of thing, that would be cheaper to make. So, but I, I think that it's going to be possible. Um, I, I think it's an inevitable with how the community is going. And hell, we've just seen in this freaking channel how the, this channel got public in October 1st of last year. Now, not even a year later, you know, almost 4,000 subscribers and it's growing dramatically every day. Um, the Stargate community is strong and we're still going and we want it. And we're willing to lay down money. And as long as we're willing to lay down money, it's only a matter of time before MGM wants to pick that money up. Uh, Mauser, thanks for the awesome vids. You're welcome. Happy to make them. Uh, Darka Puma, love this channel. Keep going, doing good work. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Koya, Stargate guy. A fun question. Do you think it's smarter Samantha Carter or Rodney McKay? Ah, so, um, I did a video about that. Which one's smarter, McKay or Carter? Um, that's, that's a real tough one. Uh, my personal opinion, my personal opinion is I think that Rodney is actually smarter, slightly. Um, he's a more pain in the ass to work with. Uh, but I think he's, he's hedging out just a little bit. But I think really what it comes down to is what field you're looking for. I mean, if, if you're looking... Um, astrometrics, that is going to be different than engineering. So ancient versus go old, you know, so it, it depends on the area. I think Rodney hedges out just a little bit. Um, 
you'll have Heiser again. Um, Origin has shown that people are interesting and ready for a new series. Also, the company is probably willing to give their basic best earning non-movie IP another try. Yeah, well, uh, I'm hoping they don't make a new movie, and I'm really hoping that they don't base it off of the original movie. That would be a really stupid decision. And Origin was more based upon the original movie, which was a stupid decision. Let's see here. I'm really behind in the comments, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I just had my English speaking session last week. Oh, awesome, Tom! You did a you did a speech about the about the Stargate franchise in English. That's awesome. Good job. It's always hard to learn another language. McKay may be smarter. Carter may be wiser. Very good point. Carter may be wiser. Um, Atlantis was also very, very good. Also, Atlantis is on Earth. That's a good point. Um, we left the Atlantis base still on Earth in San Francisco Bay. I have a theory about that coming up next after I've been to San Francisco um, and thinking about that Atlantis episode. That's coming up. Uh, but that's that's a possibility. Uh, the thing is, with all of these, they're going to have to create new sets because they sold they sold off all the bits of the sets. Um, so it, it's going to cost it's going to cost a lot of money to get it back up and going. Uh, I want to see Tilk P.I. That would be a funny show. Tilk P.I. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm not the biggest fan, or um, I don't know how to say your name. Uh, S-H-D-H-S Mac. Um, I was not the biggest fan of Universe, but I would really like them to somehow tie up the ending in some way on screen. Also, thank you for the brilliant videos. First, you're welcome. Happy to help. Uh, they did. They are making a continuation of Stargate Universe. It's in comic book form. Um, so go to Google Bing, whatever your search engine is. Type in uh, Stargate Universe comic book, and you'll find it. They're still making issues. Um, so you can go see you know, what happened in that form. But an on-screen version, you know, if... It's all about making money. Um, Stargate Universe did not make them that much money, so I don't think they're gonna they're gonna start with that. They might come back to that eventually, and uh, they can you know change up people age because there was a malfunction in Destiny because there's always one. But um, yeah. Slightly uh, shifts. Thank you for all. Uh, Brother Brian, thank you for all the time and effort you put into your content. More live streams and fan interaction would be awesome. Um, I'm glad you're liking it. You're welcome. I'm happy to do this. This is this is really fun to do. Um, I love I love making videos about Stargate. It's it's really fun. Um, as we talked before, um, am I almost caught up with the comments? Almost. As we talked before in a previous video about the future of the Stargate guy, uh, one of the things we did talk about was uh, the sustainability of these videos. I'm I'm cranking it up to two videos a week. I would love to do more than that if I possibly could, uh, but I'm working a full-time job and I'm in debt. So I'm looking at uh, picking up a, a part-time job in the early mornings as well uh, to get my personal finances in order. Personal finances and uh, Stargate Guy finances are two different things. Stargate Guy finances are only for the business side. They don't go to me at all at this point. Um, if you would like to help make these videos more sustainable if you would like to um, have, uh, if you would like the, the option for me to go to uh, Comic-Con, uh, GateCon, VidCon, you know, all these different conventions about, uh, about the Stargate and sit down with actors and interview them, all of that costs money and money that I do not have. Um, I'm trying to, to save things up. Um, but I found um, Dustin Beard. Yeah, uh, so I looked into Patreon I looked into uh, <laughs> Dustin. You're awesome. Uh, Dustin Beard commented, "Take my money, damn it." <laughs> so this this blows this blows me away. First off, if you want to do money right now, you can do super chat. Um, you click on the little dollar icon next to the little smiley face in the in the comment section, and uh, you can donate money that way. Um, I don't expect any of you guys to do anything financially. If you would like to, that's freaking awesome. And that blows me away. Um, but anyway, well, another thing that I found out is I found a website called Kofi.com. K-O-F-I.com. 
Um, and that's starting that, that I'm just uh, starting out. I created a profile on there. Um, Java, have a good one, man. I understand you got work to do. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do some more of these if you want them. Uh, but yeah, so I found uh, Kofi.com, K-O-F-I.com. And basically that's where a person can uh, buy the creator a cup of coffee. Um, you know, that coffee is like three bucks or something. And uh, that's where the creator can use that for actual coffee or, you know, for business expenses, that kind of thing. Um, in this case, making sure that my audio on my videos actually work. I have a little mixer coming in after that. And holy crap. Xerox. Uh, 10 bucks free beer for you, dude. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, wow. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so if you guys want to do super chats, that's awesome. If you want to do, um, the Kofi thing, that's awesome. Uh, buy me a cup of coffee. That's, that's cool. I don't expect you guys to, uh, just watching the videos, leaving comments and likes that is all incredible on its own. Uh, but yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to do that, it's a big help. Xerox, thanks again, man. Uh, Mr. Miles, I'm here, Raven. Hi, Mr. Miles. I'm not, I'm not Raven. Or Raven? I don't know what you meant there. Um, Darth, uh, Darth Raven, I shared you on Discord. Uh, VRUG, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. VRUG, V-R-U-G-H-T. Uh, Discord Verg, um, you a new fan. Darth Raven, awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, sharing the videos is, is a big help. Greetings, Robert Nar Naramore. I'm horrible at, you, at names. I'm sorry. Um, greetings, Robert. Thanks for joining the live stream. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so is, the, is there any other questions that you guys have about, uh, about Stargate that you want to cover in this live stream? Um, we covered the multiple gate theory. It's possibly used by Ball for cloning. We don't freaking know. Uh, do some more research on that. Um, I, I still think that there might be some kind of safety feature involved and that Ball found another way to do cloning. I just need to do more research about that. That didn't occur to me. Um, anyway, and for a new franchise, hopefully we're going to hear something at Comic-Con next week. Chris Judge, although he didn't technically say anything, you guys can't get him in trouble, okay? Uh, but... Um, all indications that there is something big that's going to happen, and um, and that would be that would be awesome. And um, yeah, if you guys want to support the channel, awesome super chat, Kofi.com, uh, Kofi.com slash the Stargate guy by the way. And there's a little button on the uh, on the front page. Uh, let's see here, a couple more comments, uh, Mr. Miles. Uh, Raven shared the link on this on our Discord and brought me here. That's what we were talking about. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Thanks, man. It's good to see you. I'm glad he did that. Um, England, do, 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 do. isn't this Isaac Arthur? I'm, I am not Isaac Arthur. I'm Taylor. I'm the Stargate guy. Hi. Mr. Moss. Dustin. <laughs> thank you, Dustin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dustin beer, $2. Thank you for the super chat. Take my money. Damn it. I will. I will. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, do you think we could see the Ryak slash Shifu Harsesis or the Ritu kid, Charlie, returning? Um, theoretically, you know, I mean, if we're going to get Tilk, I'm pretty sure we're going to see Ryak in there somewhere. Uh, the Harsesis, maybe, um, I, it, it would all depend on the story about whether or not we're going to see him or we're going to see the Ritu kid, Charlie, again. Um, who knows if we're even going to see the Ritu again. I mean, the Ritu were all about wanting to destroy the Goa world, and some of them were using terrorist techniques to destroy the Goa world. So it's without that much Goa world in the galaxy anymore, at least no system lords, I don't even know if we'll see them. It all depends on the stories. Um, it all depends. You know, whatever they think will make money and will be a good story is what they're going to go with. So it's It's possible. Um, greetings from South Africa. Hi, South Africa. I'm from Oregon. The state where people come to get welfare. Yeah. Uh, Xerox, do you think it's possible to have an open gate, uh, going through a super gate? Yes, it is totally possible. Um, totally possible. 
they actually have that in SG-1. They used a small Stargate, they put it next to the Supergate, and they, uh, they had a detonation, or they had it connected to a black hole in the Pegasus galaxy. They dialed up the gate um, in there, in, uh, in the Milky Way galaxy, and they made a jump to the Supergate to tie up the Supergate so the Ori would, start, would stop coming through. So yeah, it's totally possible that uh, they could use a regular gate to connect to a Supergate. Totally possible. And they did it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, new question. Your thoughts on Stargate Origin miniseries? Mr. Miles, uh, Stargate Origin miniseries, it was a mixed bag. I, also, I have a full uh, review video on my channel. Um, right after I saw the whole thing, it reviewed the whole channel. It's a mixed bag. There were some good parts, some bad parts. Um, overall, it's a step in the right direction it's, uh, in that we're getting more Stargate content. That's a good step. Was it a totally awesome step? No, <laughs> it wasn't. Um, but, you know, there's a whole video on that. You can go check that out. Darth Ryan, I think there's more Asgard's alive, maybe hiding, um, trying to treat their bodies. Yeah, there's still Asgard in the, uh, in the Pegasus galaxy. That is very true, so we might see them. Uh, the Stargate guy, what made you such a huge fan of the Stargate franchise? Um, I grew up uh, watching sci-fi with my dad. Um, that, that was our thing. Uh, my dad was a, uh, was an outdoorsy guy. He, he made furniture in the wood shop. He worked on cars. He built our freaking house like five times over again. And I hated doing that stuff with him. I would do it because I'm his son and I wanted to help him out. But our way of actually bonding was sitting on the couch and watching sci-fi. Uh, so we started with, uh, Star Trek and uh, he found Stargate and we started watching Stargate and I loved the idea of it. Um, we watched the original movie. We watched SG-1. As soon as SGA came out, we saw that. As soon as Universe came out, we saw that. Um, you know, and, and it, it was a way for us to come closer together because we would start talking about history. We'd start talking about science. We'd start talking about guns. You know, we'd start talking about all these things that were seen in Stargate. Um, and it was such a big connector between us. I love it. And I didn't become really a super fan until after, um, after my dad passed away. Uh, he passed away almost two years ago, very unexpectedly, um, very unexpectedly. And it was really after that when um, I really started to get more into, into Stargate as a super fan. Um, I already watched the series a dozen times over before then. But uh, that's really when it took off into super fandom. And part of that is, is you know, to, to feel closer to my dad again, um, to enjoy something that we enjoyed so much for so long um it's a way of, of extending that connection so that's what got really made me a super fan in stargate and that's only been in the past two years and that's why i started doing videos about stargate is because i wanted to share that with other people because i know other people like the franchise and i did a couple videos on my other channel and they took off um, which was incredible. I didn't expect that. But it's with Stargate, yes, it's a TV show. Yes, it's a sci fi show. Whoop de freaking do. But it is the connections behind the show that are important. And it's that connection between me and my dad that was very important, more important than I realized at the time. And that is something that I want to share with other people. So that, that is why I'm such a big fan of the, uh, of the Stargate franchise. Anyway, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, I want to see something about the Furlings. Same here. I would love to see something about the Furlings. Uh, there's a Furling profile video that's coming up in a month or so. Um, if you had become a prior, which planet would you want to convert? None. I did the missionary thing. Wasn't a big fan. Um, if I became a prior, then they would have to kill me because I'd be a horrible, horrible prior. <laughs> uh, I would use my, my super freaky magic powers to, to, uh, hang out on a beach planet somewhere and just sit there and, uh, and chill. <laughs> um, Omega ordained. Holy crap, dude. Uh, wow. Omega. Thank you. Thank you. Omega donated $20. That is amazing. Holy crap, guys. This, this blows me away. Um, thank you. Thank you, Omega. Um, 
Omega Ordained. Um, I, I visited with him. I did a road trip with my buddy Gary over at Trekker Prize. Uh, we actually met in uh, Chico and uh, hung out, had some had some good Mexican food. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with, with Omega Ordained, he also has another uh, show about Stargate. Um, Omega Stargate. I think that's the name of it. Uh, or Stargate Ordained. One of those two things. Um, if you go to his main channel, there's a link on the right. Uh, but in there, he does a lot of, of clips of different conventions relating to Stargate. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. I love watching the videos. Um, so if you like, if you want to see some convention clips, you never had a chance to go to conventions like me. Um, Omega has some has some awesome stuff on there. Thank you, dude. That is that's incredible. Rex Lee uh, should enjoy exploring the Furlings in a new series, or should they remain in the shadow of the civilization? but we don't know much about. I would say what I would love to see personally, and uh, it's become it's become a big meme. Um, I'm getting hot, so I'm going to have a drink. Um, it's kind of become a big meme in Stargate uh, with the Furlings. I would love to, to actually see the Furlings and to know about that civilization. Um, I made several theory videos about it. So, excuse me one second. It's root beer, I swear. I, I brew my own root beer. Non-alcoholic. Um, but, you know, I think that they shouldn't start out with the Furlings. But they should start with SG-1. Or not just SG-1. But they should start with basing it off of SG-1. And then we meet the Furlings and we find out more about them. That would be a killer way to bring in us as a big fan base. Um, is to really talk about the furlings, but not start out with it, but tie it into uh, what they're going to start with. Uh, Dustin Beard, my wife wants to know how you feel, how they tied Origins into the rest of the series and original movie, on how she had no idea how the Stargate worked, or that she uh, was seeing it being useful. Um, so with, hold on, wait a second. So with, Stargate Origins uh, being tied to the series, they did some things that were really cool. Um, there were some things that uh, was just plain dumb and stupid, um, you know, kind of kind of rookie mistake stuff. And uh, and they had some big Stargate fans on the set, from what I understand. Um, I mean, they had a big Stargate fan make them props for crying out loud. Um, I'm referring to Stitch's loft. Uh, Stitch made them some props, although he won't. He won't actually tell me what he made, but I have a pretty good idea. Um, so you think that they would catch some of this stuff. What bothered me about it is that they tie it, they tried to tie it too closely to um, the original movie. And the original movie didn't make millions and millions and billions of dollars over the course of 20 years. Well, it kind of did, but not to the extent of the rest of the, the, rest of the franchise. So... Um, I think that, that with Stargate Origins tying it to SG-1 and, and Atlantis and all that, it was okay-ish. Um, I felt like they did a pretty good job with Abydos. They did a great job with how Raw looked. I mean, like, that was straight out of the, out of the series. I love that continuity. Um, you know, with the, with the Stargate itself, tying it to a car and a diesel generator to make it worth, work once, I get that. That should work because there's enough energy in the gate to work once. The, how it worked the second time is beyond me. They, that should not have worked. They should have needed a lot more power. Um, and, you know, in, in Stargate 1 Season 1, for crying out loud, um, in the beginning of Season 2, I mean, we found out that during World War II, they used a crap load of power in order to try to make it work and to connect to uh, the planet that Ernest was on. Um, so, I don't know. It's a mixed bag. Uh, Dustin's wife, whoever you are, thank you for watching. Um, but it's, it's a mixed bag. I still don't know how I feel about it. Not conclusively. Dark Pumba. Dark Pumba. Thank you, dude. That's awesome. Five dollars from Dark Pumba. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And I am so behind in the comment sections. <laughs> uh... Uh, Dark Pumbaa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, Christian Lang, I like the way the Air Force was uh, represented on SG-1. I heard they had advisors from the real Air Force. 
but they didn't like the Area 51 references. That is very true. Uh, the Air Force did have advisors for the Stargate franchise. Um, everything from how the uniforms work, you know, the BDUs, um, all the way to how to hold uh, your gun, how to salute properly. Um, the Air Force was pretty, was surprisingly involved with Stargate. And, um, yeah, so they would get a copy of the script. And they're the ones that actually told the writers to cut back on the romance between uh, Sam and Jack. Um, you know, they thought that was getting unprofessional. Oh. Cyber Ice Cream, thank you, thank you. Good day, mate. Only found you recently, but love content. Thank you. Good day. I'm, I'm guessing you're from Australia, New Zealand. Thank you. It's nice, nice to see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Uh, wish your super chats could be longer. Yeah, same here. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. What is that autographed picture? Is that real? Yes, they are. Um, so I got two here. One from Richard Dean Anderson. Uh, playing Jack O'Neill. Um, and the other is uh, from Chris Judge. Peace, indeed. Um, I actually did not get these myself, even though they're made out to me. Uh, my buddy Gary, he went to a convention over in England. And while he was there, Richard Dean Anderson and Chris Judge were going to be there. Um, and so I sent him a little bit of money. He said, hey, could you maybe possibly ask them for an autograph? And he did. And it's uh, it's awesome. Um, he was saying that Richard Dean Anderson actually got in trouble <laughs> when when making uh, the, the autograph to, for me. Because he, he actually wrote Taylor in there. He made it out to me. And apparently... He was not supposed to do that at all, and the convention people were not happy. And uh, the way that Gary put it, um, he had a stern talking to <laughs> for for making making it out personally to a, a person. Because apparently that takes so much time to write down a person's name that they couldn't have it. Anyway, um, oh yeah, you heard the you heard the police too. Yeah, that's not annoying. I live like a block. Uh, from the fire station and two blocks away from the police station in town. So I have sirens going all the time and it bothers me. Uh, of course, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a trailer park being dirt poor. And the only time I saw the cops is when they were arresting my neighbors. So I, I'm a little paranoid. But that's a whole different little thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, Hunding, 1978. Um, at the Stargate Guy, do you think that a movie based on the Ghoul World Second Dynasty where the Gulawood started to get some hierarchy would be a good setup uh, to get some answers long due. Not really. Not to begin with. Um, I don't think that would sell enough money. I think that would be a little too Nietzsche. Not Nietzsche. That's a philosopher. A little too niche uh, towards just hardcore Stargate uh, fans. Um, I don't, I don't really think that's a great idea. Um, I do agree. We need to know more about that, but, um, yeah, I, I don't think that would be a good starting point. Mr. Miles is SG origin official canon. Yes. For better, or for worse. It is. Um, Stargate command is the official, um, MGM contact point, um, with the Stargate franchise. They're officially licensed. It's funded by, um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what they're funded by, um, but it is the official place for Stargate. So officially Stargate Origin is canon, yes. Um, Stargate is on Netflix, isn't it? Um, it depends on where you're at. Stargate was on Netflix when I was living over in England doing a study abroad. When I moved over to the States, it wasn't available on Netflix in the U.S., um, which was before the days of Stargate Command. So if you really want Stargate, go to Stargate Command and pay the one-time fee of like 20 bucks and you get unlimited access to uh, the Stargate shows and movies and uh, the web forms and everything in there. It's kind of cool. I don't know if they're going to move to a monthly subscription. They've postponed that off so far. Um, every now and then I send them an email saying, hey, what's the plan? But they don't really know. They don't have a solid thing, I, I think. But... Um, 
Yes, sir. Uh, Keto Pack, it's on Hulu. Yes, Stargate is on Hulu. Or you can go to Stargate Command, whatever. Uh, Jamal Willis, would you like to see parallel universes connecting the different Stargate stories? Uh, the Gates have done it before, even if only time travel related. I think it would be fun uh, to do a, a couple episodes about that. As far as a whole series, um, I don't think it would be worth it. It might be too confusing. But a couple of episodes, definitely. Uh, it seemed to be a, a great dynamic, a great story element. Some people are saying it's not on Netflix, but it's on Hulu. Um, Dustin Beard, new Icarus base. Um, England DDG. So watch the movie and then start SG-1, or is it the best way to get into it? Um, so with the best way to get into Stargate, uh, that's going to depend on each person that you're talking to. Um, personally, that's one of the main reasons why I made the intro videos on the channel is to get people kind of a vague idea about what the series is about so that they can choose, you know, where, what the starting point is for them. Um, so England DG, if you like more of the drama aspect of it, if you like more of that Battlestar Galactica feel, uh, then starting with Stargate Universe might not be a horrible idea. Uh, if you like more of the fun-loving stuff where you have some action, some comedy, some science, um, I'd say start with SG-1. Uh, the Stargate movie is, it's okay. It's a little cheesy. Um, you know, basic premise, the guys go to a planet, they blow up an alien, they come back, you know. Uh, but SG-1 is really where it takes off. And the very first few seasons of that is really where it establishes what the universe is, how the Stargate works, kind of, um, you know, what the basic premise is. So you could start there with just, you know, Stargate Season 1, Episode 1. That's a pretty good introduction. Uh, be careful about that. There is a slight amount of nudity in the, the pilot episode. Um, there is none after that whatsoever. They try to make it a, a family show. Uh, but, yeah, there's that one aspect in that. Anyway. To do. Uh, I think there will be a wrap-up of Stargate Universe. Yes, there is currently a wrap-up of Stargate Universe. It's in comic book form. Um, so go to Google Bing and look uh, Stargate Universe comic book, and uh, it has the continuation of the story there. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Holy cow, we've been live streaming for like an hour. Uh, I can watch Stargate in my country, Switzerland. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what if I'm a big fan of Star Trek Discovery? If you're a big fan of Star Trek Discovery, I don't know which one you would start with. I uh, I only saw the first half of Star Trek Discovery uh, before I wanted to um, not watch it anymore. Actually, I got halfway through the pilot episode of Star Trek Discovery before I didn't really want to watch it anymore. Uh, but I, I stuck it through until until December. Um, so there really isn't uh, uh, something with Star Trek Discovery type of feel. Um, so I don't really know. I can't really help you with that one, man. <laughs> <coughs> mm, excuse me. Matt Jones, need a series about the Ancients? Yes, I agree. We do need a series about the Ancients. Um, I would love to know more about the Ancients. Honestly... So a crazy idea that I've been thinking about, um, eventually that would be a lot of fun, in my opinion, is I think that us as fans, we need to do more uh, fan creations. And one of the things, one of my crazy ideas of like, maybe, you know, if the Stargate guy became like this huge thing and like movement in the, the Stargate uh, franchise or in the Stargate world community, uh, is that a bunch of us could get together and we could create a movie or a miniseries about the ancients that takes place either on Atlantis or like on an outpost or something. And, uh, you know, we write our own stories about the ancients and like their daily life and everything. Um, so I think that would be really cool. But um, as far as MGM doing it, Stargate Command doing it, um, I don't think that they are going to do a series just about the ancients. Um, I don't know. So I think if we want that, I think we, we I think we're going to have to make it. Eventually. 
But yeah, I think that would be fun. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, Darkmon and Jalad at Tanagra. <laughs> There's a Star Trek reference for you. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Uh, who is the hottest Stargate lady and why is it Julie Benson? Um, I'm not going to get into that right now, dude. I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother video. Um, and I kind of don't want to make it because um, I know it's only a matter of time before people within the Stargate, if within the Stargate franchise, MGM, the actors, that kind of thing. It's only a matter of time unless they've done it already where they stumble across my channel. And I kind of don't want that content on there if it's going to be seen by the actual actors. And producers? I don't know. Maybe. Right now, I'm not going to get into that. Mr. Miles, who is... Um, oh, shoot, I lost him. Uh, who's your favorite three Stargate characters? Top three Stargate characters. Simple. Number one, Daniel Jackson. Number two uh, would be Tilk. And number three... Um, is Actually, uh, maybe it's not that simple. Number three is kind of a tie between Rodney McKay and Carson Beckett. I kind of like Carson a little bit more. He's more he's more personable. Uh, but as far as like fun to watch, I don't know. It's it, it, Number three is a tie. Let's leave it at that. Um, Dark Pumba, I would like to see how the previous four ancient races collab with each other. Me too, dude. <laughs> Me too. That'd be awesome. Hunting 1978, Sam Carter is hot. Not not going there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Cyber Ice Cream, love the idea of a Stargate Ancients miniseries slash web series. I actually edit part-time and love to lend a hand to anyone interested. That would be awesome. Um, oh, maybe you can help me out with this show. I, I suck at editing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think Stargate Ancients, like, web series would be fun. Um, especially if we as fans could make it. I don't know. It's a possibility. We'll leave it out there. Um, Uyak. I would like to see a short episode or so from the view of after they had ascended. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, Discovery was going to talk about how good the last Jedi was. Um, all right, let's try this again. E England DJ. Discovery is only topped by how good The Last Jedi was and Stargate Into Darkness. Who needs boring sci-fi? Uh, what do you think sci-fi is for, nerds? <laughs> uh, anyway, England. Uh, who are the ancients? England DJ. Um, the ancients are the civilization who created the Stargates. Uh, they created the DHD, the dialing home device. Um, they are an ancient civilization of people that came from another galaxy. They settled in the Milky Way. They created all this cool technology and they ended up then ascending to a higher plane of existence. They evolved to a point where they became energy uh, and they didn't really need their physical bodies. Um, they're, they're, it's a really awesome race of people. I think, actually I know, I do have a racial profile about the ancients on the channel. Uh, so if you go to the racial profiles and check out the ancients, uh, then there's a video on there that'll give you a good idea about who they are. Do, 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 do. Omega Ordain. Editing does suck. Yes, it does. <laughs> I agree. Um, all right here. Uh, England DJ. So the ancients are the Q. The ancients, the ancients are kind of like the Q. Uh, similar idea and concept, uh, but they are not as psychotic as Q. So, yeah, it, it's, they're a really cool race. Uh, we find out a lot about them in Stargate Atlantis. Um, but yeah, I would say start with, honestly, uh, if, if, start with the video about the ancient race on the Stargate Guy channel. Um, 
And if you really like that and you really want to know more about them, Stargate Atlantis is where you should start. Um, but yeah, they're, it's, they're a really cool race. Uh, Dharma Kandulata Tanagra, what are you drinking? Asking the important question. Uh, this is a homemade root beer I brewed for the 4th of July. Um, it's actually like brewed root beer, not you add flavoring and um, some frozen carbon dioxide. My brain is not working right now. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's homemade root beer. Let's see here. Um... Chao uh, Kai, which race do you think is the coolest? And if your answer is the ancients, pick another. <clears throat> um, which race do I think is the coolest? And it can't be the ancients. Um, I kind of want to go with us, but that's kind of a cop-out answer. <laughs> the Asgard are kind of cool, but they kind of suck at the same time. Um, so I'm going to go with the Furling. The Furling are totally my favorite race, uh, because we don't know really anything about them and they're such a mystery. Um, you know, and you know, it's, it's really fun to speculate. So I'm right now I'm going to go with the Furling. Anyway, let's do a, a couple of quick more questions. This is lasting way longer than I thought it would. Um, so let's do a, a couple more questions and then we'll get this at another time. Uh, do, 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 do. Mr. Miles, one thing I've always been a bit confused on, did humans evolve on Earth completely separate from the ancients, or did we evolve because of the ancients? Uh, Mr. Miles, it's a little bit of both. Uh, primarily, we as the Tari evolved here on Earth as our separate species. Uh, there was a time where the ancients were around on Earth, and we were at the point where, um, let's see here, when they left to go to the Pegasus Galaxy, um, we were not Homo sapiens at that point. Um, it was the previous evolution of humans. Um, now, when the ancients came back, we were Homo sapiens, we were hunter-gatherers, we were just starting agriculture. And at that point, the ancients started to interbreed with our ancestors, passing down the ancient gene. Um, so it's a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, so we did evolve separately, but they uh, helped out a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Do, 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 do. All right. So everybody, I think that is it. Um, we're st uh, almost one hour, 10 minutes. Um, holy cow. Um, so this has been awesome guys. Uh, I think that we're going to leave this off here. Let me know what you guys think about this live stream. If you would like additional live streams like it or, you know, what you would like with the live stream format, that would be awesome. Let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, if you're watching this on a replay uh, for the first time and you made it all the way through the end, you're freaking awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome Stargate videos are coming out every single week where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Um, you please check out the, the, the channel for some awesome Stargate stuff. And if you want to support this channel uh, in more ways than just watching and viewing, you can go to ko-fi.com slash the Stargate guy, uh, ko-fi.com slash the Stargate guy, all one word, uh, to support it and to make sure that these videos can become better and we get to do more awesome and fun stuff coming out. Until next time, oh, I need to put down my drink. Until next time, I'll see you on the other side. And cut.